Hi, and welcome to this short toolbox talk which will cover the ship to shore safety checklist. The safety of operations within ports, terminals, and onboard vessels is of vital importance. Critical to this is the interface that is generated between the vessel and the terminal during discharge and loading operations that are undertaken within ports. This operational interface between the vessel and the terminal involves many complexities and careful consideration needs to be made to ensure that it can be undertaken safely. It is therefore vital that personnel understand their individual roles within the completion of the ship to shore safety checklist. The International Safety Guide for Oil Tankers and Terminals, or ISCOT, provides clear guidance on how the operational interface between vessel and terminal should be managed safely. This includes the completion of a structured document referred to as the Ship Shore Safety Checklist. This has a range of statements that need to be considered and agreed as part of the safety checks carried out by both parties before operations commence. The responsibility and accountability for the conduct of safe operations while a ship is at a terminal is shared jointly between the ship's master and the terminal representative. Before cargo operations commence, the ship's master or a responsible officer along with the terminal representative should agree in writing the transfer procedures. This needs to include the maximum loading or unloading rates. Also agree in writing on the action to be taken in the event of an emergency during cargo or ballast handling operations. And complete and sign the ship shore checklist. The terminal may also issue an explanatory letter to the ship's master advising them of the terminal's expectations regarding joint responsibility for safe conduct of operations and invites the cooperation and understanding of the ship's personnel. ISCOT provides clear guidance relevant to each part of the checklist to assist both the terminal representative and the ship's master in the correct use and completion. The ship's master and terminal representative have a responsibility to ensure that all under their command adhere strictly to the guidelines. With both parties committed to cooperate fully in achieving safe and efficient operations. As the terminal representative, it is your responsibility to personally check all the considerations that are the terminal's responsibility. You should assure yourself that standards on both sides of the operation are fully acceptable. This can be achieved by confirming that a competent person has satisfactorily completed the checklist, viewing appropriate records and carrying out joint visual inspections when appropriate. Prior to commencement of operations and at regular periods as agreed between the vessel and terminal representative the responsible officer and terminal representative should ensure that both sides are managing their obligations as accepted in the ship shore checklist. Where safety requirements are found to be insufficient, either party may request that operations are stopped until corrective actions are implemented satisfactorily. As discussed previously, the ship shore checklist originates from the ISCOT manual and comprises four key parts and a signed declaration. The first two, parts A and B, address the transfer of bulk liquids. These are completed for all bulk liquid vessels. Part A identifies the physical checks required and part B identifies elements that are verbally verified. Part C contains additional requirements for bulk liquid chemicals. Part D contains additional requirements for bulk liquid gases. And the final element is the declaration that is signed by both parties on completion, 
This includes agreement on the arrangements required to carry out repetitive checks on key safety areas. To complete the shipshore checklist accurately, both parties need to understand the codes used. These are denoted by the letters A, P and R and indicate the following. A. Agreement. This indicates an agreement or procedure that should be identified in the remarks column of the checklist or communicated in some other mutually acceptable form. P. Permission. In the case of a negative answer to statements coded P, operation should not be conducted without written permission from the appropriate authority. R. Recheck. This indicates items to be rechecked at appropriate intervals, as agreed by both parties at periods stated in the declaration. Let's take a closer look at the shipshore checklist. You can see that each part is broken into five columns. The first column in each part notes the relevant statement. These are clearly numbered for easy reference. Columns two and three denote the relevant responsibility. You will see here that some checklist statements are directed to considerations for which the ship has sole responsibility and accountability, and some considerations for which the terminal has sole responsibility and accountability. You will also see responsibility and accountability for some checklist statements are assigned for consideration by both parties jointly. The shaded boxes are used to identify statements that generally would be applicable only to one party, although the ship or terminal may tick or initial these sections if they wish to do so. Column 4 denotes any relevant codes that are applicable to a statement. Column 5 leaves space for any relevant remarks to be made by either party. The safety of operations requires that all relevant statements are considered and associated responsibility and accountability for compliance are accepted either jointly or singly. Acceptance of responsibility is confirmed by the appropriate party ticking or initialing in the box adjacent the statement and on completion by signing the declaration at the end of the checklist. Where either party is not prepared to accept an assigned accountability, a comment must be made in the remarks column and due consideration given to assessing whether operations can proceed. The assignment of responsibility and accountability does not mean that the other party is excluded from carrying out checks in order to confirm compliance. It is to ensure clear identification of the party responsible for initial and continued compliance throughout the ship's stay at the terminal. Once signed, the shipshore checklist details the minimum basis for safe operations as agreed through the mutual exchange of critical information. The shipshore checklist is a vital part of the communication process between the vessel and the terminal. Its correct use and accurate completion contributes to safe loading and offloading operations. The shipshore checklist is of no value if it is merely regarded as a paper exercise.